kimberlite is an igneous rock best known for sometimes containing diamonds. It is named after the town of Kimberley in South Africa, where the discovery of an 83.5-CARAT diamond called the Star of South Africa in 1869 spawned a diamond rush, eventually creating the Big Hole. Kimberlite occurs in the Earth's crust in vertical structures known as kimberlite pipes as well as igneous dikes and sills. Kimberlite pipes are the most important source of mined diamonds today. The consensus on kimberlites is that they are formed deep within the mantle. Formation occurs at depths between 150 and 450 kilometers, potentially from anomalously enriched exotic mantle compositions, and they are erupted rapidly and violently, often with considerable carbon dioxide and other volatile components. It is this depth of melting and generation which makes kimberlites prone to hosting diamond xenocrysts. Kimberlite has attracted more attention than its relative rarity might suggest it deserves. This is largely because it serves as a carrier of diamonds and garnet peridotite mantle zeniths to the Earth's surface. Its probable derivation from depths greater than any other igneous rock type and the extreme magma composition that it reflects in terms of low silica content and high levels of incompatible trace element enrichment, make an understanding of kimberlite petrogenesis important. In this regard, the study of kimberlite has the potential to provide information about the composition of the deep mantle and about melting processes occurring at, or near the interface between the cratonic continental lithosphere and the the underlying convecting asthenis ferric mantle. Morphology and volcanology. Many kimberlites are emplaced as carrot-shaped, vertical intrusions termed pipes. This classic carrot shape is formed due to a complex intrusive process of kimblitic magma which inherits a large proportion of CO2 in the system, which produces a deep explosive boiling stage that causes a significant amount of vertical flaring. Kimberlite classification is based on the recognition of differing rock faces. These differing faces are associated with a particular style of magmatic activity, namely crater, diatreme and hyperbyssal rocks. The morphology of kimberlite pipes, and the classical carrot shape, is the result of explosive diatreme volcanism from very deep mantle-derived sources. These volcanic explosions produce vertical columns of rock that rise from deep magma reservoirs. The morphology of kimberlite pipes is varied but generally includes a sheeted dike complex of tabula, vertically dipping feeder dikes in the root of the pipe which extends down to the mantle. Within 1.5 to 2 kilometers of the surface, the highly pressured magma explodes upwards and expands to form a conical to cylindrical cylindrical diatreme, which erupts to the surface. The surface expression is rarely preserved, but is usually similar to a mar volcano. The diameter of a kimberlite pipe at the surface is typically a few hundred meters to a kilometer. Two Jurassic kimberlite dikes exist in Pennsylvania. One, the Gates Adar Dike, outcrops on the Monongahela River on the border of Fayette and Greene counties. The other, the Dixonville Tanoma Dike in central Indiana County, does not outcrop at the surface and was discovered by miners. Petrology both the location and origin of kimberlitic magmas are areas of contention. Their extreme enrichment and geochemistry has led to a large amount of speculation about their origin, with models placing the source within the subcontinental lithospheric mantle or even as deep as the transition zone. The mechanism of enrichment has also been the topic of interest with models including partial melting, assimilation of sub 
conducted sediment to derivation from a primary magma source. Historically, kimberlites have been subdivided into two distinct varieties termed basaltic and micaceous based primarily on petrographic observations. This was later revised by Smith who renamed these divisions Group 1 and Group 2 based on the isotopic affinities of these rocks using the ND, Senior and PB systems. Mitchell later proposed that these Group 1 and 2 kimberlites display such distinct differences, that they may not be as closely related as once thought. He showed that Group 2 kimberlites actually show closer affinities to lamproids than they do to Group 1 kimberlites. Hence, he reclassified Group 2 kimberlites as orangeites to prevent confusion. Group 1 Kimberlites Group 1 Kimberlites are of CO2-rich ultramafic potassic igneous rocks dominated by primary forsteritic olivine and carbonate minerals, with a trace mineral assemblage of magnesium ilmenite, chromium pyrope, armandine pyrope, chromium diopside, phlogopite, instatite and of or chromite. Group 1 Kimberlites exhibited distinctive and equigranular texture called caused by macrocrystic to megacrystic phenocrysts of olivine, pyrope, chromium diopside, magnesium ilmenite and phlogopite, in a fine to medium-grained ground mass. The ground mass mineralogy, which more closely resembles a true composition of the igneous rock, is dominated by carbonate and significant amounts of forsteritic olivine with lesser amounts of pyrope garnet, Cr diopside, magnesium ilmenite and spinel, olivine lamproites. Olivine lamproites were previously called group 2 kimberlite or orangeite in response to the mistaken belief that they only occurred in South Africa. Their occurrence and petrology, however, are identical globally and should not not be erroneously referred to as kimberlite. Olivine lamproites are ultrapotassic, peralkaline rocks rich in volatiles. The distinctive characteristic of olivine lamproites is phlogopede macrocrysts and microphenocrysts, together with ground mass micas that vary in composition from phlogopede to tetrifera phlogopede. Resorbed olivine macrocrysts and euhedral primary crystals of ground mass olivine are common but not essential constituents. Characteristic primary phases in the ground mass include zoned pyroxenes, spinel group minerals, senior and re-rich perovskite, senior rich apatite, re-rich phosphates, potassium barium holandite group minerals, NB bearing rutile and MN bearing ilmenite. Kimberlitic indicator minerals. Kimberlites are peculiar igneous rocks because they contain a variety of mineral species with chemical compositions that indicate they formed under high pressure and temperature within the mantle. These minerals such as chromium diopside, chromium spinels, magnesium ilmenite and pyrope garnets rich in chromium, are generally absent from most other igneous rocks, making them particularly useful as indicators for kimberlites. These indicator minerals are generally sought in stream sediments in modern alluvial material. The presence may indicate the presence of a kimberlite within the erosional watershed which produced the alluvium. Geochemistry The geochemistry of kimberlites is defined by the following parameters ultramafic, magnesium oxide and Gt, 12% and generally and Gt, 15%. Ultrapotassic, molar K2O, aluminium oxide and Gt, 3. Near primitive Ni, Cr, Co, Re enrichment, moderate to high Lyle enrichment, Sigma Lyle equals and Gt, 1000 ppm. Lyle equals large ion lithophile elements high H2O and CO2. Economic importance, Kimberlites are the most important source of primary diamonds. 
Many kimberlite pipes also produce rich alluvial or alluvial diamond placer deposits. About 6,400 kimberlite pipes have been discovered in the world. Of those about 900 have been classified as diamondiferous, and of those just over 30 have been economic enough to diamond mine. The deposits occurring at Kimberley, South Africa were the first recognized and the source of the name. The Kimberley diamonds were originally found in weathered kimberlite which was colored yellow by limonite, and C was called yellow ground. Deep workings encountered less altered rock, serpentinized kimberlite, which miners call blue ground. See also Mir Mine and Uldachna Pipe, both in Saka Republic, Siberia. The blue and yellow ground were both prolific producers of diamonds. After the yellow ground had been exhausted, miners in the late 19th century accidentally cut into the blue ground and found gem-quality diamonds in quantity. The economic importance of the time was such that, with a flood of diamonds being found, the miners undercut each other's prices and eventually decreased the diamond's value down to cost in a short time. Related rock types, lamproite, lamprophyre, nephil and cyanite, ultrapotassic igneous rocks, calcititic rocks, 